Today I'm going to show you three different ways to locate deep sky objects when using the Skywatcher Star Adventurer so that you can start imaging more quickly. So we've all been there, we've all received our Skywatcher Star Adventurer through the post, opened it up, got it out of the box, figured out how to set it up, figured out what on earth polar alignment is and mastered the art of polar alignment and then we've mounted our imaging equipment and at that point you think it should just be a case of pointing your camera or telescope towards the sky and start photographing some deep sky objects. It's that easy, isn't it? Where the f Sadly not. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I've got five tips that I want to share with you to make all of these steps much easier. I think it's safe to say that for a lot of people, the Star Adventurer is an affordable way to get into the hobby. So you often find that it's beginners that are using this equipment. That's not always the case, of course. And the biggest challenge that we face when using the Star Adventurer is actually locating deep sky objects to image in the first place. I put a question out on my Instagram last week asking people, what video should I do next? And quite a lot of people came back to me and requested that I actually make a video on how to find time it's using the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. So if you're one of those people, then this video is for you. I hope you enjoy it. And if this is your first time here and we haven't met before, my name is Nick. And if you want to learn about all things astrophotography, start now by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell so you never miss another upload. Okay, so the first way that you can locate a deep sky object using the Star Adventurer is by star hopping. And in fact, the following two ways after this, you're going to need to learn star hopping. So it's really important that you do start to learn the night sky when using the, the Star Adventurer, which, which will come in time naturally. And to start this step, I really recommend that you use Stellarium or Similar, which is a planetarium uh, software, which will enable you to actually locate where your deep sky objects are in the sky in the first place. And what you can do is you can use this software to actually frame up your target to see how it will look at your particular focal length. So once we've got Stellarium open, what we're gonna do is we're gonna locate our deep sky object, and then we're gonna identify a bright star that's near our object. For example, if I was gonna image the Veil Nebula, then what I would do is, I I would use the star Vega or Deneb and I would locate those in the sky with my imaging equipment and I would take a test shot. Now you could do that in a couple of ways. You could use a red dot finder like this. Um, you could have that on top of your, sitting on top of your telescope. Some people have them actually sitting on the hot shoe on top of a DSLR camera. And you could turn the red dot finder on and just move your imaging equipment until you can see the um, star centered in the red dot finder. If you haven't got a red dot finder, not to worry, you could also use the live view on your DSLR camera as well and just move your um, imaging equipment around until it comes into the frame of your camera. And once you've got that bright star centered in your imaging equipment, then it's just a case of star hopping to the object. I say just a case like it's really easy. This is not easy. Now you can do this part in a couple of ways. Um, some people just do it by pure guesswork. So they will center on the bright star, they'll take a test shot, have a look at what the sky looks like compared to how it looks in Stellarium. Move the imaging equipment slightly more towards the target, take another test shot, rinse and repeat until you're actually on your target, centered and you're imaging. The other way that you could do that is if you know the location of your object in degrees, then you can actually use your hand as a ruler to move across the sky. And the way that you're gonna to wanna to do that is you're gonna to wanna to have your arm fully outstretched, obviously up towards the sky rather than in front of you. And you're gonna use a few different measurements. So one finger is one degree in the sky. Three fingers is five degrees. Your fist is 10 degrees. Your two end fingers is 15 degrees. And your thumb and little finger is 25 degrees. So once you've located your bright star with your imaging equipment, you can then use your hand as a ruler to move across the sky. Now I'm not gonna pretend that this isn't easy. This will take practice. It is frustrating. But the more you practice and the more you learn the sky, the easier that this becomes. And what I recommend doing with this method is starting out with an object that's really quite big. So take the Veil Nebula again. With my Skywatcher 72ED and a crop sensor DSLR, the Veil Nebula will fill quite a large portion of the frame. And it also has a really bright star in the center of it called 52 Sig. So when you're taking your test shot, it's a really easy way of knowing whether or not you're on target. Because even in a two, two and a half minute exposure, you won't always be able to see the deep sky object actually on your camera screen once you've taken the test shot. So you really need to know that you are on with a point of reference. So if you use slightly easier targets to begin with, like the Veil Nebula, um, I use that as an example because it's one that I've been imaging this week, then you'll know that you're on target. The next way to locate a deep sky object with a Star Adventurer is to use a wide angle telephoto lens. So you will find it much easier to star hop and find a target at say 55 mil than you will at 300 mil. 
That might seem obvious, but it is really easily overlooked because people get dead set on wanting to find their target as quickly as possible, that they'll just stick their, their camera, all, zoom in all the way, start taking some images, move it slightly, take another image and just get really frustrated, not find anything, and then it's an imaging night ruined. So what I recommend in this case is starting off with the first method, locate a bright star near to your target and take a test shot. Instead of taking that test shot at, say, 300 mil, take it at 55 mil. Take that test shot, find your bright star within that field of view and see if you can actually work out by the stars that are on the frame on, your, on the back of your camera or on your laptop screen if you're using a laptop and then see if you can focus in slightly on a different part of the sky and take another test shot but this time take that test shot slightly more zoomed in. So instead of 55 mil, now let's try now taking it at 75 mil and so on and so on. Keep zooming in until you're at your desired focal length and your target is within the field of view. It is much easier to start with a really wide field of view and then narrow down than it is to start at 300 mil. Now that method can work really well if you're using a telephoto lens. However, if you're using a prime lens or a telescope, then that doesn't particularly work as well. And what you can do in that scenario, a little bit easier if you're using lenses, is just start off with a completely different lens entirely. Zoom in until you've reached the maximum zoom on that lens, take it off, put a, put a different lens on and keep doing that until you get to the zoom on the prime lens that you are using. It's a, a little bit trickier if you're using a telescope because the way that you would mount that is differently and you would have your camera attached to the end of the telescope, etc. So I, I appreciate that this method may not work very well if you're using a small refractor telescope like I do. Now the third, but by far the most advanced method that I want to talk about in this video is plate solving. Now plate solving is usually reserved for those that are using a really fancy uh, go-to mounts where you can just slew to your target. Now what we're going to have to do in this case is plate solve but plate solve manually. For those that haven't heard of it before, plate solving is basically an image analysis tool that will take one of your test exposures and it will use the stars in your image as reference points, look it up in a database, and it will come back with a result showing you exactly where your telescope or camera lens is pointed in the sky. Now from there, if we had a go-to mount and we were connected with plate solving software, the plate solving software would tell the go-to mount where it would need to go to find the target from where that test shot was taken. Really easy. What we're gonna to have to do with the Star Adventurer is take a test shot and then manually move the mount based on the location that the plate solving software has told us about. Now there are a number of plate solving softwares out there. One that I've been using is called Astro Tortilla and I've been using it for no other reason other than then it was the one that I found first. I haven't used any others so I can't recommend this one over others but I can say that when I have used it it's been successful and I integrate that with Astrophotography Tool. So I use Astrophotography Tool on my laptop, take a test shot, that uploads it into um, Astro Tortilla, it looks it up in its database and it comes back to tell me where the telescope is pointed. Now the important thing to note on Astro Tortilla is that this plate solving software requires an internet connection. So if you are out in the field and you don't have any internet, um, you could tether your phone, for example, or you'll need to use a different plate solving software that doesn't require an internet connection. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see a full tutorial on plate solving. I didn't want to cover the details of it in this video because I didn't want to make this video a half an hour long video. Plate solving is a subject in its own right. So if you're new to plate solving and want to know a little bit more detail, leave a comment below and I will make a video for it in the future. Now, for those of you that have stuck around to this part in the video, you now get the benefit of five tips that I want to share with you to help all of the things that I've mentioned in this video so far. Number one, practice on bright targets. Now that may seem obvious and it might not, if you're a complete beginner, you might not know which objects are bright. Um, for example, most galaxies are pretty bright when you've taken a test shot. An example of another bright object that you can use for target practice is the Orion Nebula. And it's a firm favourite with beginners and for the following reason, I think, is because you can actually see it with the naked eye. So if you take Orion's belt and look south of Ulnatak, you can actually see um, the star underneath there is actually Orion's belt. So you can get used to star hopping 
but at least you're star hopping with visible targets only, which makes the whole process so much easier. Now using the Orion Nebula is great because it's visible to the naked eye. You can really get some brilliant practice using your hand ruler to find out the degrees between Ulna Tech and the Orion Nebula. And because it's visible, even if, even if you don't get it quite as accurate, at least you can keep practicing and knowing that you will definitely find it because you can, if you can see it with your eye, you'll be able to find it, don't worry. A second tip that I have for you is one that I have already mentioned, and that is a red dot finder. This will make your life a lot easier when you're pointing towards the sky, because before I got one of these, I can't tell you the amount of times that I was using the live view on my camera and I was moving my telescope around in the sky and thinking, right, I'm, I'm pointed absolutely at this part of the sky. You look through the red dot finder and realize that you're actually quite far away from where you thought you were pointing. And as we know in, in astrophotography, when you're trying to find a deep sky object, you, you, you could be talking that much between finding the target and not finding the target. So one of these will make your life a whole lot easier. I'll put a link to one of these in the description down below. Tip number three is to up your ISO to a reasonably high setting. So I always image at ISO 800 for the simple reason that ISO 800 is the best ISO for my Canon 650D. Now, when you're using live view on your camera, it will use the ISO setting that you have set. So if I'm using ISO 800, I will see some stars on the screen, but I won't, I'll only see the brightest ones. If I up my ISO to ISO 1600, I'll see more of the sky. And that just makes it a little bit easier when you're moving around the sky to know where you are. And that leads us nicely into tip number four, which is to actually use the live view on your camera. Not everybody realizes that DSLRs have a live view. It makes life so much easier. It saves neck ache trying to look through the viewfinder and you'll find that the live view will show you more than what you would be able to see with your eye through the viewfinder. And tip number five, this is really, really, and um, probably the most important tip that I'm going to share with you. And that is to use a planetarium app like Stellarium. They are, there are others, but I use Stellarium. And you can actually set up your equipment in Stellarium to give you the correct field of view. It will actually show you what a deep sky object will look like in your field of view so that you can tell how big or how small it's going to be, which will help you with your test shots later on. It will tell you the position of where your target is going to be in the sky so you can plan for that if you've got any obstructions like a tree or a neighbor's roof or something like that. And just planning your session in general will make your life a lot easier rather than just going out into the garden and thinking, oh, what could I, what could I image tonight? And if you want to learn more about the Star Adventurer, click into this playlist here or click on this video here to see an example imaging session of me using the Star Adventurer. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and the bell notification.